To say I was a marathon runner would be a stretch. You know, I was a miler, and the marathon was the culmination of the distance training for the year before we started working for the mile. When I won Houston in, uh, that year, Al said, you know what, you have no idea how special this is gonna be for you in the coming years. And I realize now just how blessed I was to finish that marathon. It was, it was pretty incredible. Not anything like today. There is a picture of me finishing in Memorial Park. There are two posts up, like volleyball net poles with finish across it. There's no chute. There's no uh, mat for chips. When they took that picture, my grandmother and my ex-wife and my two sons are in the background of that picture. That's how many people did not line the course. You know? <laughs> I tell people, you know, that three of us finished and two went the wrong way, but I didn't turn those signs, you know. I was just lucky, you know, I, that's, that's all I can say. I, I was lucky to have won, and uh, I was lucky to have won such a prestigious marathon. I'm Dan Green, and I won the first Houston Marathon back in 1972. Back in those days, the running community was very small. You knew everyone that you were competing against. I had run the Galveston Marathon the year before. My good buddy Leonard Hilton, an All-American from University of Houston, Olympian, wanted to run the Galveston Marathon and try to win the team title. And he talked me into it. I'm running out there, there's no water stops. So I finished, I think I ran about three hours 19, and uh, I'm dead, I'm ruined. When I got through with that run, I told him, in no uncertain terms, I will not run the marathon. That was too far, I was sick when I got through, I didn't feel good, I didn't wanna do that again. But I had another friend, Clyde Villamez Jr. Clyde had won Galveston that next year and run 234, and he was running the Houston Marathon. So I thought, wow, you know, I can run with Clyde. When you run a marathon, because it's so long, you go through a lot of different stages of emotion. And there was a time there when my legs were cramping and my arms were cramping, and I was wondering if I was gonna finish, because back in those days, you had to turn around a 55-gallon drum in the middle of the road each time, which is not a very conducive to running fast. And I'd, I'd do that and it would change my stride pattern and I'd start to cramp a little bit. But when they started telling me that I was catching Clyde, I started getting a breath of fresh air. And when I could see him, I got really excited. And then I passed him and I knew I was gonna win. It was a, an incredible feeling, you know, to come across that line and actually win. I ran 232-33 that day and it was really pretty cool. And I got a medal. I have a trophy, I got an igloo ice chest, and a t-shirt. I have completed 15 Houston Marathons. I've run many more. The Houston Marathon, when it first started, was a local marathon. Everybody in Houston participated. Now, it's an incredible gathering of the community. You're racing all these Olympians. It's pretty awesome. It's turned into one of the top marathons in the world. I'm 73 years old, and I've been really blessed with good health and the blessing of running when I was young, and um, I'm just gonna direct young people and how to run and sit back and watch them. I've been to several marathons. I've never seen an expo better organized, better designed than Houston. The race is incredible. It's a good course. They're constantly trying to upgrade and trying to keep it abreast of all the other marathons. It comes after the holidays, so it takes you out of your routine because it allows you to relax and go into the marathon with a clean head. You know, there are so many things in running. You can't run forever. You can't play football forever. But being a great person, that's what's gonna take you places.